Welcome back friends, welcome back to the homestead. Um, if you've been part of the channel for a while you know that I have a smart greenhouse and I built a system for it a couple of years, maybe three years ago now, um, three winters ago maybe. Um, but it's been in operation for a couple of years and it was always meant to be a prototype, it's actually this one here on the screen. Um, this is from a video where I was talking about some of my failures and improvements and now it's time to kind of put that progress into place and build version two. So here I've got uh, a box of, well, first of all, I've got a Raspberry, 4, uh, Raspberry Pi 4B um, mini computer. I've got uh, and a nice, really nice case and power supply for that, which you'll see in a bit. And I've got a whole box, as well as this is the case, the box that's gonna go in, much bigger than the original one. And I've got a bunch of sensors and plugs and connectors and wire and components, which are gonna form part of the um, sort of second generation of my smart greenhouse control box. Um, what we're going to do in this video, uh, this is going to take quite a few videos to be able to put together and film, but in this video I'm going to do the kind of planning element. So plan uh, on paper or on the computer what I need to be able to make this operational, what elements I want to be tracking and um, what sensors I need to be able to do that and what controls, you know, what inputs and outputs I need from the control box and the, the microprocessor and um, work out, you know, what I can do. Have I got enough inputs with one um, ASP32, which I'll be using to control it, the microcontroller, which is the same as I used last time, et cetera, et cetera. So really planning session, visual, um, what do I need? And then uh, we can move on to the building in a future video. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have the passive solar greenhouse, and you, you probably recognize it. Um, four windows, one, two, three, four, a couple of beds, a door, roof, obviously. Um, we're going to be looking at what the what data the greenhouse receives in terms of controlling stuff and what data it sends. Um, and what you know uh, from sensors so over here i've got some examples of stuff that we're using at the moment um and we can sort of drag these in and then write the ideas down here we'll write a list of what we need so obviously we need to control the windows which we do at the moment so if we um use these actuators so we need one actuator there and actuated there up until now if you follow the journey you know that I only control two windows but I have the option to open four the question is do I want um, to do that in the future the reason for any opening two is that my thoughts were that as the ventilation is over here we are actually causing airflow to come in here um, and it sort of goes up and then out like that um, causes a, an air current so if we were to have these open as well it might not have such the effect of you know we're trying to get the air to rise up the hotter air to rise up and go out so for now i think i'm going to stick with the two windows because that does seem to work but perhaps have the option it'd be nice to build in the future proof option perhaps for a third i don't think we'll need a fourth so So we need to write down here window one, window two, and window three. Perhaps we'll bracket those as we're not going to use it immediately. We also control the ventilation fan up here. Um, and I quite like the idea this is at the moment this has been open well for the summer it's open and then for the winter we close it with using some um, insulation what would be much better would be to have a door which opens and closes um, so that allows us the option obviously we want it closed in winter to keep the warmer air in but sometimes we need to do a flush to get the moist air out So 
say we need to control that as well. Um, and that would be an, another an actuator, albeit a smaller one. I'd like to know... Oh, that's more of a sensor. Um, we need to control... Down here we've got the water coming in and we've got power. Now, power goes to an MPPT um, charge controller. I've bought a new one, a Victron smart controller, which I'm going to install, and I'm hoping to hook that up. Um, it needs a slightly different system to use it than what I'm using. So I might have to use a second chip to control that. So we'll park that for now. But the water we can control. Um, we do at the moment, obviously, we have the irrigation. So we've got, we have the watering system. And we, to do that, we need to turn on a pump. And what I plan to do here actually is move to a valve system because we, in addition to the pump, we also, if you follow the channel, you'll know we have some atomizers to cool things down. I hope in some respects never to have to use them. But they're there just in case we really need to cool the greenhouse down because it does get quite hot sometimes. Anyway, to be able to do that, we need to have a valve um, drip tape valve and valve. Possibly there's a two way valve, uh, but I still. Yeah. So we need to we need two valves. And we have a pump here as well. Anything else we need to control? Now, in terms of ventilation, what I'd like to do is really improve that. So what I'm going to propose is, I've bought it already, but I've got to install it this year, is perhaps have a second input fan. Um, so this extracts air. And then we have a fan which pumps air in. Um, So I'd need to be able to control that as well. Um, we could control the door, but I'm not. I don't think um, I, I want to know what's happening on the door. But I don't think at this point I need to control it. The last thing I need is it um, sh closing on me. Um, I think that's about it in terms of what we need to control. Then we could look at sensors. Let's look at sensors now. So this is the data that we need to send back to the control box. Um, so we need, obviously, temperature and humidity. We've got one set of sensors doing that at the moment in one place, I suppose. It's always been over here where the box is. But what I really would like to know is what's going on up there and also what's going down on in the beds now whether we use a soil based probe to do that or, or just another of the same sensors resting I don't know um, I have got the options of both I've already bought them so I can use both but certainly um, we don't general temp humid high and temp humid low Another reason for wanting the separation of the data is that 
um, in the in the attempt should a, a freak frost occurrence happen I mean these the greenhouse has been really good actually at, at, at protecting frost in the springtime when we need it most when stuff's in here but it would be no it'd be good to have an idea of data what's going on down below where a frost event would have an impact as opposed to going on up here where it wouldn't have an impact um, Do you want to know soil temp? Let's put it in there anyway. We need to know what's going on with soil moisture. So we'll put another sensor in the soil moisture. And I think it might be good to have an idea of what's going on in both beds. <clears throat> And actually it would be nice um, although I probably will go for a weather station at some point it would be good to have an idea of what's going on temperature wise outside all the sensors these sensors type sensors that I'm using do both temperature and humidity anyway I don't need two separate sensors um, outside and also I plan to introduce a water flow sensor so I um, have an idea of how much water is actually flowing the reasons for this are numerous just because I'm intrigued about how much water it takes but also in the event of it doesn't switch off or the water stops flowing if the water stops flowing because we've run out in the tank we need to stop the pump uh, going for example or if the water is for whatever reason there's a, either a fault or perhaps I override the pump or something and forget about it then if it's running for too many I could set I could for example set a time say right after one hour stop no matter what's happening stop the pump um, if it's still flowing so the system will know that the water is still flowing somewhere or there's some reason there's a leak perhaps if there is a puncture in the hose somewhere before after the valve before the pump and the water's leaking then the system will know that water is leaking from somewhere because it's flowing and we can um, take action or send an alert to me or something like that that will help us with that and, and in addition other than those kind of simple binary things it, we could actually measure how much water is flowing into the greenhouse just from a data capture point of view um, I would like to have an idea of what's going on with the door so a simple read switch on the door to say whether it's whether the door is open um, or closed <laughs> um, because of the really the if it's been left open by me or anyone else really the pressure doesn't work as well. the ventilation system works better when the door is closed I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive but we need the pressure inside so that event events properly so that the warm air goes up and out or pushed in here in reality it might be a bit lower but the, there's a flow if the door is open then when the ventilation fan is on then what happens is air comes in here and goes straight back out again as opposed to it working coming through the windows up and then out so it'd be good to know what's happening with the door um what else we don't really need sensors on the windows to know whether they're open or closed because the logic will tell me that um 
it's they either fully open or fully closed because of the way the actuators work what else I don't think there's anything else I need to know it might need um, to ha I might need in the future an indication of the air temperature that's coming in that might, might be handy to know if I find a way to cool air down I've got some ideas for future project on that um, Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, now it's a case of working out, do we have enough? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Um, because the chip itself only has so many uh, legs that you can connect the ESP32 that you can connect to, although there are ways to give you increase, you know, increase the capacity that you have. Um, if you look this is a layout of the ESP32 and each leg each um, pin you can you get an idea of what you can do and some of them are restricted so what I've done here you can get this um, Excel spreadsheet off the internet but I've modified it a bit to work better for me and here is also a picture of the chip with all the pins you don't need to worry too much about these um, on this video anyway but what I'm trying to make you do is uh, make sure is that I have the space to be able to put these things in so all those things that I listed here all have to go here somewhere so forgetting the beige color at the moment wherever there's a white space I can do something with it in fact there may be two more white spaces here if I uh, go a different route in addition to the control and sensor elements there are a couple of things that are on board the box that need to be able to access the ESP32 as well such as the displays um, and those kind of things which I might use a second chip to do without adding to the complication but um, it would free up stuff and yeah also these beige ones are inputs only which is fine we've got plenty of sensors so we have was it 18 things we need to fix in 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 so there's 22 spaces so we should be all right um is that right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18. yeah 18 so we're okay with one chip on that and then um, maybe some space to do a couple of other things as well. So that's my thoughts really on the planning side. I think if you're like me, I'm very visual and I, I found it really helpful to have that in front of me, um, this kind of schema um, to make a note and then I've got it all written down. I can save this now and come back to it later or print it out. Yeah, there might be things that I've forgotten um, but I think that pretty much covers most things. I hope you found the video um, of interest. If there's anything you want me to go into more detail with this, because I'm probably going to be doing more smart videos this year. Well, I will definitely be doing more smart videos. Um, I, I don't really go into tutorials and stuff. It's just more about approach, how I'm approaching it. I'm by no means a smart expert. I'm learning this stuff as I'm going along, but I'm pretty good at planning. Um, and we're going to have, you know, that will be the, this will lead to our version two of the control box. Um, and the next stage really is to get some of this stuff plugged into the chip and um, get working with um, Home Assistant, which I talked about at the start. And getting some of these things working with Home Assistant to make sure that I got my head around that because that's the next stage as well. So, um, yeah. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up um, or any helpful comments, feedback, criticisms will be really welcome from your experiences as well. So onwards and upwards with Smart Greenhouse version 2. Um, the next video will be looking at Home Assistant and getting that set up and my experiences with that. So I will say bye bye for now and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye for now.